Welcome to the Happier and Healthier Podcast. I'm your host, Maria Marlowe, and this is a place where we don't rely on good luck or good genes for our health and happiness, but rather we create it with our thoughts and our actions each and every single day. Each week, I'll bring you a thought or a guest that will help you live your happiest and healthiest life. Are you ready? Welcome back to the Happier and Healthier podcast. Today's guest is Kelsey Wells. At the age of just 29, Kelsey has become one of the most sought after personal trainers for women around the world, including for her over 1.3 million Instagram followers. You may remember earlier this year, I interviewed Kayla Encinas, founder of Sweat, And Kelsey is one of just two sweat trainers handpicked by Kayla to create fitness programs on the app. Kelsey rose to influence following her Screw the Scale Instagram post that depicted her transformation photos using Kayla's BBG workout, which went viral in 2016. Since then, she continues to help her community focus on self-love, inner strength, and lifting weights without intimidation in the gym. She's the creator of two programs. Power, a gym-based weight training program designed to help women sculpt lean muscle and increase their overall strengths, and post-pregnancy, designed to carefully assist women in regaining their strength and confidence after having children through low-impact abdominal, pelvic floor, and full-body workouts. Kelsey, thank you for being here. Yeah, thank you so much for having me. So you are the picture of a personal trainer right now. You're super (laughs) fit, super toned, but you weren't always interested in fitness. So so what was the turning point? Yeah, I danced growing up and got an injury when I was 16 that I had to quit. And after that, you know, in my adult life, I never, fitness was not a regular part of my life. I didn't exercise regularly. And I honestly looked at exercise as the ultimate chore. And I just didn't understand the impact that active living and nourishing your body could do for you. So for me, it really all began after the birth of my son. He's actually four and a half now, which is so surreal. So it's been about four years for me. So relatively recent. Wow. So it was after pregnancy that you started getting interested Mm -hmm. and you were doing my favorite workout of all time, the (laughs) BBG. (laughs) Yes. So after having Anderson, I was in... It's hard. I mean, he's my first and only. And you hear a lot about the magic of new motherhood and having a new baby. And there is so much magic and more love than you can ever imagine. But there's also other sides to it that aren't talked about and things that I wasn't expecting. And I struggled a lot at that time. Was a very hard time for me emotionally and mentally as well as physically. I didn't have There was nothing wrong with my body, but there was everything wrong with how I viewed it. And I was in a rough place. So I actually began exercising because my doctors suggested that it could help with my postnatal anxiety. And I thought, there's no way that's way too easy. Like there's, yeah, right. You know, but I was like, I'm going to give it a shot as kind of a last ditch effort before other methods. And so I found BBG through Instagram scrolling and I was like, I'm going to try this. And it first started with walking, you know, taking my son on walks and stroller. And then on days when it was too cold, I would try to do those workouts in my living room. I couldn't do them at the time. I couldn't even do one push up, let alone the full program, but I needed it mentally. And it was incredible to see that it did help. And I start to feel changes. I mean, within weeks, I didn't look any different, right? Like in the mirror, I didn't see changes yet, but I was sleeping better. I had more energy. I had a little bit of confidence, which was something that I desperately had longed for and been lacking, you know? And so it was like, and then all of that, once I started to realize that, then it's just like, I wanted to do it more, you know? So it kind of, everything started there. And then I just found my passion in fitness. And yeah. I love that you said that because I think a lot of times that we forget that fitness and working out really helps boost our mood and our Mm -hmm. mental health. And it helps us just feel better, more energy, Mm -hmm. all of these things, things that we don't think about, because I think sometimes we just associate it with weight loss, but or toning up, but Mm -hmm. it's really the mental health aspects, I think that are some of the largest benefits. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. So 
Back in 2016, you posted something on Instagram that is now the infamous <laughs> Screw the Scale post. So for those that haven't seen it, what exactly was it? Yeah, so it was a photo of me at the very start of my fitness journey, like my original before photos that I ever took. And a photo of me after, I don't remember how long, but it was like the lowest that I'd ever weighed. It was what I thought should be my goal weight at the time. And then a photo of me current in 2016. And then it had my weights on those photos. So it was 145 pounds in my before photo, 120, I think, in the lowest, and then 140 in my current. And it came about because I had heard like, you know, muscle weighs more than fat per volume. Like you can't worry about the scale, but in my fitness journey, I had been losing weight at first. And then when that stopped, I kind of started to doubt myself, doubt my efforts, like doubt everything. And I remember I hadn't weighed myself in a while and I got on the scale and it, and I was significantly more like I was almost to where I started and I was falling apart over it. And I remember having this conversation with my husband and I was like, I'm losing all my progress. Like, this is insane. What's happening? And he was like, are you crazy? Look at yourself. Look at who you are. Like, look at how you feel. Look at what you can do. Like, you're crazy. Like, this doesn't matter. You've got to stop doing this to yourself. And I had a huge awakening, like looking at those photos, I was like, oh my God, he's right. You know, like it actually doesn't matter. And at that stage, I was just barely starting into my like professional studies with health and fitness to become a certified trainer. So I was still so new to everything. And it was so powerful for me to see those. I'm like, I need other women to understand this too, because if I could help somebody else stop beating themselves up earlier or save them from those struggles that so many women face about like, you'll step on the scale. So many people will step on the scale in the morning and like their mood is literally dictated by the number that they see. And that's absolutely tragic. It's ridiculous. But it's happens to so many of us and we do that and we value that. So my whole point with that post was like, it was a huge rant and it was very raw and heartfelt. And if I knew that it was going to go viral, I might've maybe, you know, edited it better or, you know, put my words differently, but I'm, it was very raw and authentic and passionate because I wanted women to understand what I had just learned and gone through and what I had worked hard to mentally achieve, you know, on my own journey. And it was really cool to see how much it actually did resonate. Well, probably like, because you were so raw and authentic yeah. and in the moment, that is why it went viral because so many people can relate to that. I think every woman and even men could relate mm -hmm. to that because I think we do get so fixated on the scale, but it's really not everything. And you can see so clearly in the photos from your first photo where you were 140 to your last photo where you were mm -hmm. 140, you looked like a completely different person. Yeah, my body composition had changed entirely. Right. And that's just it. You know, as you gain muscle and you lose body fat, you might weigh the same, but you're going to look totally different. And, and it's about health. Like the scale is not an accurate measurement of your fitness or health levels. Like in and of itself, it's not... I literally do not own a scale. Like I, I do not weigh myself. I do not know. And it's like, I'm such an advocate for that because it just, you should, I encourage women to, you know, there's nothing wrong with wanting to have progress. There's nothing wrong with having goals, even aesthetic goals. Like that's okay if they're, if you're using healthy methods to achieve those and that can be great, but mark those things by ability. How many pushups can you do? Like how much weight can you lift? Or how are your clothes fitting? Take a photo of yourself, you know, take a measurement. Don't worry about number on the scale. That's going to change based on time of the month for women. If you're bloating, if you've just eaten, like what time of day it is. So don't do that to yourself, you know? Yeah, I love that. I never weigh myself yeah. personally. And I think, you know, for some people, it can be helpful as a tool to sort of gauge where they're at mm -hmm. and their progress. But I think for most people or more people, it is something that they dread and that just mm -hmm. brings them anxiety. And if you're one of those people, just throw the exactly. damn thing out. Yes. And just, yes. you know, you can rely on photos, like measurements, mm -hmm. the way that your clothes fits, all of those things are going to show you your progress mm -hmm. and how you feel. So after this post went viral, then how did you get linked up with Kayla and become one of the sweat trainers? Yeah, it's so surreal to think about. So I was actually in touch with Kayla before that post. We met through Instagram. She found me when I... I didn't begin my fitness Instagram account until about a year into my fitness journey. My fitness journey in the beginning was like intensely personal and solitary and... It was just such a delicate period of life for me in my personal life. 
and other things I was going through and I didn't feel comfortable being public about any of that, you know, and that's okay. And after a, a while, you know, all of these things started to shift, things started to happen. I was so passionate about this and I would talk to my husband and I would express like, I wish, you know, for me, I didn't have anyone in the beginning. I didn't have a support group or a trainer or somebody to give me advice or someone to just say, Hey, I've been there or I feel you or like, I'm going through this too, or to motivate me, encourage me. And there's so many things that I learned so painfully that if I would have had someone there for me, it could have made all the difference. And I really felt like I could, I wanted to be that person, that friend for other women who are where I was or who, you know, wherever you are in fitness journey, like you, you don't need to be doing it alone. All of our journeys are very separate, but there's so much power in community, which is one of the reasons that I am so honored to be a part of sweat. But yeah, so I began my Instagram and Kayla and I got connected pretty quickly. She saw my transformation. And I remember the first time messaging her, I was like so excited because she, you know, I had been using her program for a long time and I was able to do it now at this point. And I was just so proud of myself. And I shared with her about my journey privately. And then later on, she like posted my transformation and we honestly just became friends. Yeah. And then it was, so her and I had been friends for a long time. And, and so It was a while later when Toby approached me about sweat and he knew because they knew me, he knew that I was working at this stage. You know, I had become a professional trainer. I had my pre and postnatal certifications and I was working on my post-pregnancy program. And he approached me and told me his idea for sweat to create a space where recognizing that not all women can or want to train the same way. They wanted to create something where women all across the world could come together and live happier and healthier and find a diet and a training style that works for them and try new things and support each other. And he wanted me to be a part of that and to have my post-pregnancy program in the app and be a sweat trainer. And I was honestly, I would just never forget that day. Like it was life-changing and I knew without a doubt that's, it just fell into place like it was meant to be because I didn't know what I was going to do with my program actually begin my studies to switch my careers. I never planned on that. I just wanted to learn and educate myself with the actual like scientific side of fitness. I had never studied kinesiology or biology or anything in college. So it was like, I wanted to know and educate myself on what I was so passionate about. And so I didn't know what I was, where it would lead me when I started doing this program. But then when Toby approached me about it, I was like, this is it. This is perfect. You know, and I was so grateful for the opportunity and am very much still humbled and proud to work with people who have like-minded visions and goals that I do. And that's genuinely caring for like the health and wellness of women. Yeah. Well, when you have passion for something, that's, I think, just opens doors and opportunities will yeah, come Yeah, I think so. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So that's incredible. Thank you. So you do have two programs. I know you started with the Mm post-pregnancy, which we'll talk about in a second. But first, I just want to talk about the power program. Yeah. So how is that different from BBG? So it's very different. Power is a hypertrophy-based weight training program, and BBG is a cardio-based plyometric circuit training program. So they're completely different styles of training. I started my journey with BBG, but you know, once I started studying fitness and learning about weight training and different types of exercise and everything, I really was drawn to weight training. And what I would do with BBG in the beginning was modify it. Like I would slow it down, take rest and use heavier weights, like as heavy weight as I could. And then when I started learning, I would write my own workouts or kind of play with different techniques and styles. So power is, was created because I wanted to show women how I personally train and how I had been training and what I love. And it was my goal to create something that could really help women maximize their time and efforts in the gym and show the everyday woman that weight training is an incredible option for fitness. Because for a long time, there are stigmas surrounding that, that it's not feminine or, you know, it's too intense or it takes too much time. And that's not true. There's so many benefits to it. And so power is about... I took classic proven weight training techniques and exercises and combined them in a very unique way that very intentional way that really helps women, you know, like give them a solid weight training option. And that's very beneficial. So yeah, it's kind of my baby. (laughs) Yeah. So just to put it out there, because I think people are still sometimes scared to use weights. If you use weights, you're not going to bulk up, right? You're right. But it's such a... 
it's just there's so many of those stigmas around like that weight training is for men or you'll get a certain size if you pick up weights. And the thing is that the women that some perceive as bulky are usually incredibly diligent and talented athletes who work and train so hard to gain that kind of muscle mass. It's not easy to do. You're not going to just all of a sudden, you know, bulk and have really big muscles. It's like you have to be eating in a huge caloric surplus and training very intentionally. And there's so much that goes into that. And that's something that those women are very proud of and should be. And I think that that's beautiful. And I think bulky is interpretive. Everyone's definition of anything is interpretive, right? So, but no, in general, that's not an automatic thing. That's something that's hard earned. And if that's for you, then go down that road, you know, but if it's not, it's not something you need to worry about, you know, weight training in general has amazing benefits, mental, emotional, physical, all of it. It's so empowering. And in general, as you build muscle mass, your body burns more calories at rest, the higher your total daily energy expenditure, it can boost your metabolism. Like it's a great way to burn fat as well. So it's, it's an overall great option. Whereas for a long time, I think people thought, you know, all exercise had to be cardio based to burn fat and gain muscle. And that's just not true. So. Right. Yeah. And I think this whole idea of like women shouldn't lift weights or shouldn't lift heavy weights is so outdated. Yes. Um, And sometimes I'll go to fitness classes, like fitness classes are very trendy Mm -hmm. in New York, especially in the big cities. And a lot of these women geared classes, they'll have like a little weight section and they'll give you two or three pound weights. (laughs) And I'm just thinking your handbag is at least 10 pounds right? with your computer in it or your baby. baby And so we... Mm -hmm unknowingly are lifting way more weight yeah, during yeah. the day. And That's a good point. Yeah. So, all right, let's talk about the post-pregnancy program. Mm-hmm. So for someone who just had a baby, how and why should they be working out differently? Yeah. So post-pregnancy, I really wanted to start there because although I was no longer training that way, obviously, because I was no longer like newly postpartum, it was very personal, right? Because that's where my personal fitness journey began was in that phase. And also I felt like there was a huge need for a program that attended to that stage in life because your body goes through so many changes during a pregnancy and delivery. And it doesn't matter if you were an Olympic athlete, gold medalist, or if you'd never exercise a day in your life, you still need to let your body heal and attend and be aware of those changes before getting into or resuming whatever type of training you did. It's great to stay active through pregnancy, but still, again, you have to, even if you were able to do that, you need to be careful and understand that your body needs time. It needs to heal as you, you know, regain that strength. So it was very important for me to fill that gap and try to provide that, which we were able to do and which is something that I'm just, yeah, I'm very proud as a woman to have that. And I think it's just something that was needed and so important that women don't feel overwhelmed at that phase, you know, a program that is doable, that has that stage of life in mind, you know, you can do it at home, it's 28 minutes or less, little to no equipment. It incorporates stretches, it focuses on healing diastasis recti or, you know, like abdominal separation, restoring any lost postural alignment, like pelvic floor strength, all of those things, like the first phase of that program is meant to really heal you while you s- regain your strength. And so that's that's the focus there. And that's why, yeah, what it is, what it's about, why I did it. Yeah. And so after pregnancy, how long should someone wait before embarking on a program like this? First and foremost, primarily, you have to wait until you are cleared by your doctor. So Typically, that's about six weeks. Most doctors will make their follow-up appointments for that at about six weeks, depending on how active you were prior to or during pregnancy or your or how your particular body and pregnancy went. Could be a little longer, could be a little faster. But once you're cleared by your doctor for exercise, that's when you'll want to start that program. Okay. Or yeah. any exercise in general. Right. And I'm sure it's different for everyone. And I think yeah. sometimes people are so eager to lose the weight or get back into shape and get back into their skinny jeans, but you really do have to give your body that time to heal before you start. Yes, absolutely. And if you don't, it's, you could just exacerbate any issues that you've had or prevent yourself from healing the way you naturally would. So I really encourage women to be patient with themselves and don't push it, you know, wait for that doctor clearance before you start. Right. And are there any common moves or workouts that someone who's just had a baby should really steer clear of? 
Yes. It Well, and again, it's going to depend. Abdominal separation is the biggest thing that people should be aware of. It's not something to be scared of. It happens to so many women, but it's something that lots of women weren't aware of. I wasn't. I had never heard of DR after I had Anderson, but I actually wrote a blog series on diastasis recti and it's like what it is, all about what it is how to self-check if you have it and exercises to help heal it. Because until your abs are like healed or like come back together, it's unsafe to do any supine, like traditional ab work, like laying on your back. So you want to, well, really most all traditional ab work you should steer clear of. There's very gentle exercises. Again, I have like specific workouts just for that, that are free blogs, free eBooks that people can download off my website, kelseywells.com if they want to look at those. And those are also the foundation of that first phase of my post-pregnancy program. Cause it is, you do have to be mindful. And again, that's, what's so great about the post-pregnancy program. You don't have to modify anything. Once you've been cleared by your doctor for exercise, you can trust that the workout that's presented to you that day is safe for you to do and that you'll have the ability to do it. So I didn't want women to feel discouraged because it's very hard when you've had a baby and you've waited to train and you're finally ready to like get back into it and you have all this motivation and then you try to do a workout that you used to do or that you just want to do and you can't do it. And that's hard. And I've been there. And then it's also confusing because it's like, what's safe? What's not safe? Am I pushing myself too hard? Am I being hard on myself because I'm just lazy? I'm not pushing myself enough. Like it's, you play mental games, right? So with the program, it's meant for that. It's designed for you at that time. And especially the first 12 weeks, the first phase of that program, that's exactly what it's for. So that's great. I feel like there's so many things that nobody tells us before we get pregnant. <laughs> yes. It's, and yeah. You just find these things out, I guess. Once you actually I, yeah, get there. I definitely did. I was like, wait, what? <laughs> yeah. So, and then how long is the program? Is it? It's 24 week program and it actually has four additional like beginner weeks. So it'll ask you some questions when you download the sweat app and choose that program. And depending on your activity level prior to and during pregnancy, it might place you at like beginner week one or week one, but we always err on the side of gentle, right? So if you are placed at week one and you feel like it's a little bit too gentle, you, your abs are already healed. Your doctor says you're okay that way. Then maybe skip two more weeks and try that. And then you kind of find your place. And that's why it's a full 24 weeks. I would say, however, at about after week 12, so weeks 13 through 24 are the phase three of that program. And that is no longer modified in any way. So that is just low impact circuit based weight training. So that's great for anyone for a lot of different purposes. I use those workouts sometimes when I'm in a time crunch or if I'm just at home and those are great, but it's really those first 12 weeks that are going to focus on the pregnancy issues and changes and healing and all of that. So got it. So after the 12 weeks, that's when you can kind of get yes. back into so the more, Yeah. More so the more. program is 28, but it's the yeah. first 12 that I would say are necessary postpartum. Right. Okay. And now let's talk food a little bit because yeah. in the fitness equation, definitely training is one part mm -hmm. and then the other part is, of course, food. Absolutely. So can you walk us through maybe your food philosophy and what you eat in a day? Sure. Yeah. I My philosophy on nutrition is honestly that there is not any magic answers and there's not any one size fits all anything. Nutrition is paramount to your health and to your success. However, it's very individual. And I know that might not be the most popular answer or the most on-trend thing, but I truly believe in nourishing your body with wholesome, nutrient-dense foods and how exactly you do that, how you eat clean, essentially is going to come down to your personal dietary needs, preferences, intolerances, allergies, your style of training, what your fitness goals are. You know, there's so much that goes into that, which is why I will never endorse like, this is the diet for everyone. Like this is the one because that's just not realistic. With eating, something that I've talked a lot about on my page is my personal like journey with food because that might be the furthest that I've come. I mean, to be honest with you, before I had my son, I was not healthy. I mean, I drank Dr. Pepper instead of water, essentially. <laughs> That's horrible, but I just didn't understand. You know, I, I ate fast food almost daily. I didn't know anything about nutrition. I thought that healthy foods or health foods or eating healthy meant going on a crazy calorie deficit or diet and I just didn't get it. You know, I didn't know I wasn't educated. 
And for me, when I was postpartum and first began exercising, it was way, way, way too overwhelming for me to think about changing my diet and exercising. I was a new mom trying to work from home, support my husband. We were, he was still in college and working full time, barely saw him. I, you know, was struggling with anxiety, trying to work, be a mom, like exercise. I was just too overwhelmed. Right. And I felt like if I could just get the exercising down and I'm not even going to think or worry about my diet, like that was step one. And that's how I had to do it. And so that's what I did. And then, you know, what's interesting is the healthier I became and the more active I became, the more I naturally made healthier choices. Cause I soon started to realize that I felt better when I didn't eat junk. And then so slowly I started to make that shift automatically, but I never did a drastic plan to get me like kicked off or a big cleanse to like get me going. I don't think those are always bad, but that's not how I did it. And that's not what you need to do. I don't want women to feel so overwhelmed or think, you know, they have to do that. You can just, for me, it literally started by making the healthier choice. So if I was out at a restaurant and I really wanted to get a burger, I would get a side salad instead of fries with it. Or it started with literally baby steps like that for me. And then once I started understanding that I felt better when I ate better, I started eating better more often. And then it was just very gradual over the course of a year. And then I started my formal studies and then I really started to understand and it became easier still. But now my normal is completely opposite from how I used to eat. However, you can't make that change in one mindset, like in one second, in one day. You've got to give yourself patience and grace and learn. It's not about feeling guilty. It's not about good and bad foods. It's about nourishing your body and eating in a way that's going to make you feel best and fuel you for your life. And that's, it's a process. It's a journey. For sure. And I grew up similar to you, only eating junk food and fast food all the time, drinking soda like it was water. And I didn't change my diet overnight either. It yeah, really it took can. me years, multiple really, mm-hmm. to actually switch over to the way that I eat now. And it it is a process mm-hmm. where you have to take those baby steps, like mm-hmm. you said, a side salad instead of French fries. Mm-hmm. And those little upgrades, they do start to add up. And Absolutely. And then it's when you feel it. Like yes. you feel so yes. much better. You have more energy. Your skin looks better. Yes. You know, you're less the, bloated. Yes. Right? All these things. And then you're like, that's when the little light bulb goes off. Mm-hmm. And you're like, oh, actually, I don't want the junk food anymore. So it's not Mm -hmm. even, you don't feel like you're depriving yourself. Exactly. You just feel like you're nourishing yourself. Yes. And that's exactly it. You're setting yourself up for success when you stop looking at it as this big burden or this big black and white thing, because it's not. And, And I still have treats, of course. Like I love, you know, we're in New York just yesterday, we were walking by and I saw this milk and cereal bar. It was like something I'd heard of for like a year and I love cereal. And I was like, I have to try that. That's my thing. You know, so I got this ice cream cone in the middle of the day and it was amazing and I didn't feel guilty for it and I didn't even think about it. And, and it's fine to indulge. It's fine to have fun treats and stuff, but it's, I have those things in moderation. I don't depend on them. You know, I fuel my body first and, but yeah, it shouldn't be about good and bad. It's not black and white like that. And it's the guilt of that cycle of thinking and the guilt that women tend to beat themselves up if they eat a certain way or if they overindulge or, or if they start eating healthy and then they quotes fail, you know, and then they get into this negative mindset cycle and beating yourself up is way unhealthier, way worse for you than anything you could have eaten, like period, no matter where you're at in your food or fitness journey. So When you take off the negative stigma surrounding food and diet, that is like my foundation for my nutrition philosophy right there. And then everything else, you know, it's individual. I could give practical tips, you know, like drink tons of water, eat veggies first, like things like that. But that's not, I just want women to really hear what, like the why, like why, you know, and what actually matters. And then there's, there's many ways to do that. There's a lot of right answers. Right. And junk food is not what throws off your healthy eating. It's the guilt surrounding it and the feelings of shame or you're a failure or those things. That's really, I think the root of the problem because that just perpetuates the situation. Exactly. Yeah. So kind of along that same vein, I think a lot of people want to exercise or want to eat healthy, but Mm -hmm. they feel like they lack the motivation to do so. So what advice do you have for them or or how do you stay motivated? I don't. I mean, honestly, it might sound harsh, but my advice is to do it anyway. 
I love exercising. It's my form of therapy. I exercise six days a week. I take one rest day. I don't do it because I always feel like doing it or because I always want to, but because I need that for my mental, emotional, and physical well-being. And I understand the vast impact that that has on almost every area of my life. And so it's like you brush your teeth. You don't necessarily enjoy doing that. Why do we do that? Because you have to do that. You take care of your health, right? Like you just do. And that's how fitness is. It's like you don't have to be massively into fitness. It doesn't have to be your hobby or your favorite thing or you don't have to do hours a day. You don't have to become a trainer, but you do need to be active, you do need to incorporate exercise a few times a week into your life because you need to take care of your health and your body and because you deserve to be taken care of. Like you need to prioritize your health. And it's so, I understand in saying that it's hard. It's hard to work out when you don't feel like it, when you don't feel good, when you have a million other things to do. But at least for me, there was a huge turning point when there was just a lot of guilt surrounding working out at first because I didn't have time. Like I had so much going on and as most women do, regardless what stage of life you're in, not just new motherhood, but all the time we have so many demands. We're being pulled so many ways. We have so many hats that we wear and so much on our shoulders and there are usually great, wonderful things, but how can you give of yourself when there's not much to give? And for me, it was like, when I took 30 minutes or 40 minutes to take care of myself, that is actually when I started to believe that I was worth taking care of. I think for coming, it's, it's, wow, sorry, I was not expecting this, but just putting myself back in that place in those shoes, it's very, it's very hard to not have confidence and to not see your worth and those feelings and struggles are very real. And I think for most women, we struggle with insecurities. Every woman does, but especially that's why my foundation is always self-love and empowering yourself through fitness because it's about that first. And that's how fitness changed my life. There's a lot of ways to empower yourself, but fitness is a phenomenal one. And I truly believe that it's like, how? You always talk about self-love. Well, how do you start to do that? Like I get people asking all the time, how do you have this confidence? Like how did this start? Is it because you look like this now? No, I can tell you 100%. I started to feel better and value myself way before I started to look better. And it's because when you go through the motions of giving yourself that self-care and treating your body as it should be treated, you start to understand that you're worth that. You know, of, of course you should. I'm so grateful for my body and all that it went through. And if I'm ever pregnant again, it's going to be so different. I'll probably look the exact same as my first original before picture. And I was so beautiful then. I just couldn't see it, you know? So it's all about having that gratitude for your body and meeting yourself where you are and starting your fitness journey from there and understanding that it's not a before and an after. This is your life and this is your health and your health is dimensional. It's mental, emotional, and it's physical. And taking care of yourself through being active is something that you must do to look after not only like your actual heart health, right? But also your emotional and mental because you deserve that time for yourself and you deserve to prioritize yourself and understand that you're worth that. And that should be a very important priority on your list. And then that will help you, you know, in your job, being a better wife, being a better mother, it'll better enable you to help everyone else and care for your loved ones when you're first caring for yourself. And I'm so passionate about that. I'm passionate about that as well. I think that's so important that we do love ourselves and take care of ourselves and put ourselves first. Because I think as women, in a way, we were kind of taught to always put everyone else before ourselves. And then when we do that, we don't have anything left for us, right? And I think that sort of fake it till you make it in a way is just I know yes. you don't want to do it. Just yeah. go on, do it. You'll feel better. Mm -hmm. And then you will actually want to do it at some point. Yeah. You know, it goes from there. But exactly. Yeah, the, and the other thing that I always try to drive home to people is that there's nothing wrong with wanting your body to like look a different way or your no. health to be better, right? Of course. That's yeah. totally fine. What you don't want to do is you don't want to hate yourself right now exactly. for getting to this point yes. where it's this way that you don't want it to be because if you feel that way, you're going to act that way. That's what I always tell people, right? So if you love your body, 
you're going to want to nourish it, Mm -hmm. you know, and if you think of yourself, like you have high self worth, you're going to want to feed it healthy foods, you're going to want to go to the gym, you're going to want to go to nature and and do things that you like. But if you have that poor self image, where you're mad at yourself and hating on yourself, then you're not going to go to the gym, right? You're Mm -hmm. not going to eat the healthy food. So it, it sort of just perpetuates itself. So really that that thought of how you view yourself is the place that's really going to help you making that switch exactly is going to make your yes. habits stick a hundred percent yeah so um switching gears a little bit yeah. to like a lighter note do you have any favorite fitness or workout gear Ooh, that's a good question <laughs> Like brands, like athletic wear brands. I love, it's funny. I was always like into fashion growing up. I dressed myself like I wouldn't let my mom dress me when I was like two. And she was horrified by that. But (laughs) I've always kind of loved to express myself through what I wear. And I love finding athletic brands that are just unique or different and maybe smaller brands that you haven't heard of or giving, you know, new businesses a shot. And of course, with me, it's got to be practical. It's got to be clothes that are actually work well, that I can get a good sweat in, that have quality, that aren't going to fall apart after one wear. That said, probably a few of my faves, Corral, they're based in LA. They're smaller, but they're growing now. They're phenomenal. They're kind of like really fashion forward, but their pieces last forever. I have leggings of theirs that are literally over a year old that still look new. So like, I love them. I like Cleo Harper. That's a little brand out of Australia. For shoes, I love APLs and Adidas for my cardio, like running shoes. Really anything. Like I like the Adidas Originals line. I like, there's so many, like anything unique. You know, I'm not so concerned with brand names. I just like things that that I like. So, yeah, you're always yeah. very cute. I'm not like partial to anyone or anything. It's like I, I saw the cutest top when I was at Target grocery shopping the other day, like the cutest sports bra. And I love it. Like it's one of my current faves. So it's just really just like whatever. You know? Right. Yeah. yeah. No, it's so funny because I think back, I don't know, 10 years ago into high school or college and you used to wear like old baggy t-shirts mm-hmm. and sweatpants. <laughs> it's true. It's out, true. And now it's like... Well, I didn't work out back then, but <laughs> I do have memories. Of... Yeah. Yeah. Now, now we have, there's so many brands now I feel like that we have to choose from. What I love about that is that athleisure is a legit thing. So like I can walk around to go to my meetings and I mean, I am a trainer, but it's like, I feel it's getting more socially acceptable to wear like athletic wear, like oh, for sure. places. And yes. it's like kind of street to studio vibes. And I love that because yes, that's yes. All. I'm all for that. I agree. Just throw like a leather jacket over <laughs> yep, it and you're good. Perfect. You're dressed up. <laughs> So do you have any advice for women entrepreneurs in the wellness space who want to spread this message of health? So I know you counted a little bit of your journey, but yeah, do you have any advice for people who want to kind of spread health and wellness? Just be authentic. You have to be genuine in everything that you do, or there's literally no point to doing it. And honestly, like, I feel like that's the only thing that I have to say, you know, I'm not an expert in business or anything of that nature. But it's like, if you speak about things that you care about, genuinely, you're going to touch people and you're gonna, you never know who you'll impact, who you'll come across, who you'll meet, who you'll connect with. And I think that's the number one goal for any, you know, anyone in any business, if you're doing something that you're passionate about, you're going to be successful. And it kind of comes down to that. And I know we talked about a lot of different things today. But one question that I like to ask all Uh my guests, if there's just one tip or piece of advice that you could leave our listeners to how to live a happier and healthier life, what would that be? I think, you know, my overarching, like fundamental thing that I live by is as cheesy as it might sound, it really is loving yourself. And it's so much what you just spoke to. It's something that I've spoke to from the start. And I always will. And that's to let all of your efforts, especially in your health and fitness journey, be founded in a place of gratitude for your body and yourself and your health and self-love. Because you, I promise, I promise you are going to get so much further towards your goals, aesthetic and otherwise, if you are basing your efforts in a place of positivity than if you are beating yourself up every step of the way, that's just setting yourself up for failure. So yeah, just ditch the guilt, stop being so hard on yourself and yeah, self-love. Very well said. 
Well, thank you so much for being here. And thank you for all that you do and spreading this amazing message and really helping motivate and inspire people to get healthy. So I really appreciate Thank you. Thank you so much for having me. Seriously. So you can find more about Kelsey at KelseyWells.com. And you can also find her workouts on the Sweat app. Thanks for tuning in this week. If you enjoyed and got value from this episode, I'd be so, so grateful if you can take just one minute to leave an honest review on iTunes, as that will help us reach more people and get incredible guests on the show. To say thank you, email a screenshot of your review to info at mariamarlo.com and we'll send you a free three-day healthy eating sugar detox meal plan. After each and every episode, I encourage you to come say hi on Instagram at Maria Marlo, that's M-A-R-I-A, M-A-R-L-O-W-E, or in the private Happier and Healthier podcast group on Facebook. In both of these places, we can continue the conversation about today's episode, so come and share what you think. If you want more, you can also head to mariamarlo.com where you'll find tons of healthy recipes, meal plans, and resources to help you live your healthiest and happiest life. Lastly, if there's someone you know who'd enjoy this podcast, make their day and mine and send it to them now. Until next time, don't forget, health and happiness are a choice. Our thoughts become our reality, so make sure you're thinking up a masterpiece.